Hello, this is Dr. Brianna Willey, and this is my channel, Business for Nerds. Why did I name the show Business for Nerds? Because I'm a nerd. I enjoy and love sci-fi, video games, reading fantasy, all types of things. I also love to talk about all things business, and I'm as I'm learning, I want to grow and collaborate with other business owners. So welcome, business nerds. I'm interviewing entrepreneurs so we can mutually support each other in business. Today I'm talking with Rachel Summerfield, LPC, the owner of Olive Branch Counseling. In this group practice, they provide individual and family therapy, consulting for therapists, growing their practice, clinical supervision. Did I say your name okay and your business name and all that? Yeah, you did. Awesome. And how are you today? I'm good. I'm just waking up. It's 8 a.m. in Arizona, so I have my coffee. I have my multiple beverages, you know, as we like to have. But I'm mm -hmm. doing great. How are you doing? Doing really well. It's bright and sunny here in Florida. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> Um, let's see. I also have my beverages, my coffee, my water. Um, all right. So first I want to ask you, what is something you nerd out with in your life or business or both? <laughs> well, yeah, the cool thing is I found a way to kind of tie my passions into work. Um, I have been a gamer since I can remember. So back in the nineties when it was, you know, just Nintendo or Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> like Donkey Kong, Mario. So I've always loved video games. Um, mm -hmm. As an adult, I kind of got into RPGs a lot. So mm -hmm. Skyrim was kind of like my sort of gateway to RPGs. I feel like a lot of people love just yes. Elder Scrolls series. Same. So good. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Fallout right now. I'm playing um, 3 and New Vegas. I found a mod to combine the two. Anyway, go back to you we we can we'll share about that later yeah. <laughs> that's cool oh, that's awesome. okay go on sorry so no you're all good please do like uh because i have <laughs> i have quite the motor map so just interrupt me when you have something um but yeah i was doing fallout for a while because the show came out on amazon so mm -hmm. i was like i have to go back and play um so yeah i just enjoy a good video game the way that i've kind of tied that into like my practice and everything. I work with kids and teens and young adults as well. Um, and I found that gaming has just been such a fun way to connect with them. And since mm. I work with mostly neurodivergent people, sometimes that full hour of just staring at each other, even if it's like in person, which is, you know, a little less awkward than video, it's mm -hmm. still a lot. Um, right. So I, I found that if I can figure out what their nerd, thing is what their passion is and we can get to gaming that we actually reach some really deeper places because it's just sort of this regulating grounding activity mm -hmm. that we can do together so mm -hmm. I definitely love that I've been able to tie that in in a way that helps other people feel less alone because also being a, a girl gamer per se um, there's definitely lots of girl gamers, but I feel like a lot of women don't talk about it. There's still sometimes a little stigma there. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to, you know, be aware of that and break that down. So yeah, I could talk your ear off all day, but that's sort of my main nerd passion. <laughs> I love that. We're going to have to talk outside of this and go into mm -hmm. all our nerding out with games and fallout and all that good stuff and Skyrim <laughs> anyway that's so cool and I love how you tie it in with business and you build rapport with gaming with people that's so neat so tell me about your business so it's a group practice yeah so I started my solo practice a few years ago and in my typical ADHD nature I was like let's just like expand let's do this and see what happens so last summer <laughs> My son was mm, a couple months old and I was like, we're gonna, we're just gonna see what happens. So I um, went all in and hired a couple people, but I also sought tons of advice and help and consulting, um, did it a little differently, decided mm -hmm. I don't have to reinvent the wheel so much. So last, uh, last summer took that on. And honestly, it's been really great. I think um, one thing I've noticed that 
people struggle with when opening a group practice is worrying about income, which is absolutely fair. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stories that you've probably heard too, where people start yes. to expand, right? And they're like financially just drowning and it's months or even years down the road and they're not even maybe meeting their business expenses, let alone maybe they're not profiting. And so um, that passion of starting a group practice and creating like a different culture where I'll just randomly send them a DoorDash gift card to say like, thank you for being amazing. I am offering higher rates than most people to pay them, um, my clinicians. So I'm just trying to create a really like caring, loving culture that really respects the work that people do down from like interns to fully licensed. Like, I don't care if you just are in grad school, just got out of, uh, you know, your internship, like you're just as valuable as anyone yes, else. So definitely for sure. I think we're all trying to break that down that, um, you need to like earn it hustling type of belief around starting your career. It's not a great right. way to start your career. <laughs> Yes, being broke for a long period just isn't sustainable. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're like burnt out and you're just Already? only a few years in. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was last summer. And since then, um, I think I have uh, four clinicians right now. And uh, just very recently, um, maybe I want to say a couple months ago, I was just getting a lot of uh, messages and feedback from therapists in Arizona, but also randomly in different parts of the country, which is really cool that mm. uh, they see what I'm doing and that they they feel like that's a model that they would like to use, um, which is really humbling and really uh, means a lot to hear from other therapists. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way to make this something that I can do more and offer people um, and I think as business owners, it's always super helpful to have different uh, sources of income and yes. different ways, you know, so you don't burn out on whatever mm -hmm. else you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's a super new um, adventure, but it's been really fun so far. So my goal with my consulting practice is to help people who are either newly trying to open their own private practice, or maybe they've had a private practice and their practice is maybe struggling with like marketing getting new clients, yeah. things like that, mm -hmm. or if they have a practice, but they are thinking of expanding. So it's been really cool. Um, and I think nice. it's just been, yeah, a nice way to sort of help others and just be able to give them insights, but also like give them free resources and tools. Like it's the passion behind that is really more like, how do I give back to others? And um, help other people be successful because I don't want other business owners, therapists to have to struggle through that process. And there is a way to do it. I think that will help you still have balance, still have, you know, some vacation time and, and a start and end point to your day. Cause that's really hard when you're running a business. Oh so, yeah. yeah. That part's a little bit newer, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's been, it's been going really well. So those are my two um, main things that I'm doing right now. Cool. Now, is that other stream, is that something you're just starting or is it a separate business or what does that look like? Just curious. Well, that's a good <laughs> question. Yeah, because a lot of people that I've been consulting even before I opened a second business are like, do I just put it under my therapy license, like the business license? Um, I have found having a separate LLC, a separate business name mm. is just good boundaries. It's cleaner um, accounting wise. And it's also just like cleaner for the behavioral health board. So not that you yes. have to do that, but that's just like the advice that I've gotten over um, the course of my consulting work that I've been doing with mm -hmm. some really amazing people who have already done this work. So I have two LLCs, two separate websites. <laughs> Try to like good. really make it clear. And I think that's just good anyway for our mental health to have that boundary. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the other business? So it's Branch Out because I'm a dork. So it's like it needs to tie into all of branch counseling. So Branch Out. I, just, <laughs> I love that. Just popped into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> all of branch counseling and then Branch Out Consulting or, or Branch Out? So I, 
Right. They they didn't have, I think branch out consulting was taken. So I was like, all right, branch out LLC. So it's branch out. And then um <laughs> yeah, so the whole reason behind my original practice name, Olive Branch, is because my daughter's Olivia. So everything I do, there's always like some kind of nerdy or passionate reason behind it. So Aww. yeah. So when I had her, I was like, um, olive close kind of symbolizes symbolizes peace like not that my toddler is bringing me peace but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> I still like the symbolism and the idea that it relates to something really special to me but it's not like right there and super obvious and weird either so that's really neat and I think you're you know, I'm still learning about neurodiversity and I experience some neurodiversity myself. And I've noticed with my study with it that we are very deep individuals. We have, you know, we want to have meaning behind a lot of the things we do. And it sounds like right there, um, you know, I I don't know if I've read that, but it's just something I'm noticing. There's a lot of depth and meaning and I'm hearing that. Yeah, and you don't like you don't have to read that to know. I think it's so much of the neurodivergent experience is not in that DSM and that mm-hmm. lived experience is is so valid. So yeah, I usually do vibe really well with someone who's also neurodivergent. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Um, so that's so cool. So all of branch counseling and then branch out LLC and they relate and connect. That's so cool and cute. <laughs> I like it. Um, let's see. So you already touched upon another question I have, which is about compassion fatigue. You were talking about balance and having so separation between the two LLCs, separation with um, having boundaries around your work. Um, do you have any other guidance you want to give us about managing or preventing compassion fatigue? Absolutely. I mean, that's, a, I think, a lifelong goal that we're always having to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've found to be really helpful is to ask for help. So like I was kind of mentioning, I have an accountant. I have someone who helps me with social media it's even beyond just these roles within your business. Like I need help with figuring out dinner for the family or so I've learned to just be a lot more open to asking for help, to asking other therapists, how they're doing things. Um, I Mm -hmm. think with self care, especially being neurodivergent, it's pro it's proactive. So what I do is, If I'm scheduling therapy, I schedule the next session before I'm done. So if I leave it up to my brain to carve out self-care time, it's not happening. So Mm. future me is so happy that I went ahead and took that extra two minutes to just create the next self-care thing that I'm doing. So if I'm getting a massage or something and feeling bougie that day, then (laughs) if I'm done with that massage... (laughs) I will schedule the next one, even if it's a month from now or whatever. So I find that just having like continuity with scheduling the self-care so that I don't have to think as much. Like that. my brain, yeah, my brain just sort of, it has a limit. And Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, good morning, Rachel. Make sure you schedule that massage today. I'm going to be thinking about, oh, no, my website, a link isn't like, a link isn't Mm -hmm. working. Like there's a million things that happen mm-hmm. it can happen so that has been really helpful i think just having my own therapy i love that there's that time that i just get to be a human and a client and makes yes. me better at my job so yeah i mm-hmm. think that just that scheduling ahead of time and also being creative with it it doesn't need to be something long like an hour and a half massage maybe i only have 30 minutes that day and i'm just getting on my switch and playing animal crossing and we're just mm-hmm. farming <laughs> whatever yeah. It like. yeah it's so. unique to the person absolutely mm-hmm. and i'm learning that it's not black and white you know it doesn't need to be this epic self-care moment it can just be something right. short and sweet but still regulating you and um I think the last thing that 
I just swear by is the do not disturb setting. That is fantastic. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you can schedule it. Um, I have mine where if I'm in a meeting, it just comes on, it's magical. Or um, at a certain time of the night, yeah, I just have it set that like at 9 p.m. I'm done. So just a lot of technology stuff, I think. Yeah. That's really cool. What type of um, system do you use that you're able to set that up? Is that like with your phone or just curious? <laughs> no, it's it's, uh, it's something that I had to learn too. So I, I know it has it on my iPhone, the settings. Oh, okay. So that's through my iPhone, but I know they have apps. I'm sure there's an app for literally everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I, I've just used my iPhone for that. Cool. I have it with, um, so I use Google business and I have my hours in there. And when I'm busy, it does say do not disturb, but remembering to schedule, like say I took a week off, I need to remember to set aside, you know, like block that time off instead of saying, oh, I'm just open, you know, um, and People can't yeah. schedule during that time, but I'm saying like with the uh, phone calls and all the things, and I have an assistant that helps too. But, you know, being organized, I guess, is my struggle. <laughs> Working oh my on gosh. it. <laughs> I don't know if I have much to say there or any advice, but I think like, yeah, I think that proactiveness is super key and it's not perfect. You know, there are some weeks where I'm like, oops, that didn't really happen the way it normally does, but you yes. pivot. And you learn and you move on and you just go with it. <laughs> yep. I wrote a blog with that on Friends when Ross is saying pivot. I, I worked that in yes. to my blog. <laughs> Always. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is there anything else you want to tell us about either business or how you support counselors or the type of maybe therapies you all provide? Sure. Yeah, I can tell you just kind of like what our, I guess our mission, our approaches, what we tend to work with. So mm -hmm. I have always worked with children and teens, but when I opened my practice, I found that that was just a huge need in my community in Tucson, Arizona. Um, mm -hmm. There are some, um, there are tons of amazing play therapists and, and child therapists, but there's also so many people who are needing help because of post COVID and all of those things. Yeah. Um, I found that because I have experience in the LGBTQ community um, and experience with like family members and friends, there's this intersectionality between the LGBTQ community and neurodiversity. So there tends to be a lot of people who are neurodivergent and also in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. So I have quite a few clients who are trans with either autism, ADHD, or both. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that that was just like a really unique area that I felt good about working with. Um, and my team is all very affirming and they're always like, send me to trainings, I wanna learn more. So we tend mm -hmm. to get a lot of those two populations and we love it. Um, I also think in Arizona, there is, it's scary. I mean, Florida too, with with a lot of the political legal things going on for the tr for the trans community um mm -hmm. we want to be able to create a really safe space where they can process any changes that might happen in trans affirming care mm -hmm. so that just sort of naturally sort of happened um in a really beautiful way and mm -hmm. i just made sure i think as business owners we're super careful who we involve into our business because it it is you know, it is financial, but it's also passion at the same time, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. So everyone on my team is just understands that and holds that same belief. Um, we do get a lot of BIPOC people in our community. Um, Arizona mm -hmm. is predominantly uh, Caucasian. We do have several Hispanic people because we're right next to Mexico. So there's just a lot of people that come over here um, and need help. So um, we do get a lot yeah. of just like biracial clients. So yeah, we, we're kind of, I think our focus really is about diversity, inclusion, um, not just like we understand it, but like we are doing our due diligence to get trainings and really 
do more than just we are, you know, we understand it. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of, I think, where we really shine as a business and as clinicians. Yeah. Um, we do some groups. So right now we're doing a kid, like kids and teens neurodivergent groups. The kids group is gaming. So it's really, really cute. We all hop on Roblox or whatever server. Um, and we talk about what it's like being neurodivergent and eight, nine, 10 years old. Aww. And gaming is cool because it brings up feelings like you died in the game or someone beat you in this game. And what a great way to like capture that without having to be like, tell me about a time last week where you felt that way. And the kid's like, I don't know. I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast. <laughs> I hear so, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> right. I have to think I about don't it. Even eat. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah we're starting to do more groups. Um, we are starting to also take more insurance as we're trying to serve as many people as we can in however many ways we can. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to offer some reduced slots and. Um, you know, still help them make the income that they need to take care of themselves and their families. Mm. So yeah, that's, I think, the main uh, clientele that we tend to get that we really enjoy working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, play therapy is huge in our practice. So I have a whole sand tray, walls, you know, mm -hmm. fun stuff like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think we we all sort of have a different angle that we work with clients on. And I think as the owner, I'm getting better at knowing like this person really would be best with this clinician. So we try to find like a really good fit based on the client that's coming in, even if it's not our practice. And we're like, you know, this person in this practice actually would really work well for you. Yeah, it's very individualized. Yeah, therapy, very cool. Okay, and then your other business, with supporting counselors. Um, so it sounds like you mentor individuals who want to grow or start and then expand expansion too, like group practices, like branching out into that, like your name says. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I always so cool. feel a little cheesy saying it, but I'm like, it's true. Like you are branching out. It fits. It's just, it does. It totally yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely the goal. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not like at the place. I know some people will consult firms and businesses, and that's super cool. I'm thinking, yeah, more small picture um, individuals. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's been really cool so far. I, I think Instagram is, it's the Wild West sometimes. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I have oh, gotten yeah. some really, yeah, I've gotten some <laughs> really good, good feedback still even between all the weird spam stuff that you know just happens mm -hmm. um, but I've gotten people in the east coast and west coast and it's yeah it's slowly building as well and I think the biggest thing that I hear from people that are trying to expand is just fear and worry about income and just wanting to know like the nuts and bolts of how to add people on in a way that you know is sound and and what do they have to pay for or what can they do? That, like, how can they trim any cost, which you absolutely have to when you're expanding. Mm -hmm. And I do website development. Um, I, oh. I don't, I tend to charge below like what the market value is because I don't, I haven't taken a website training or development or I don't know any coding. Like I, but I have because I got hyper-focused on it. I got obsessed and learned how to, design websites and create logos. So um, although I don't have the training, I think that it's something that I've always nerded out about. Like in high school, I would do all my own HTML coding on my MySpace. That mm -hmm. is my era. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, MySpace, same. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I definitely hear you. I don't know where my MySpace went, but I still, I think, have one. <laughs> if it's still. Maybe it's for the best that we don't. <laughs> yes go back in there yeah Ooh. don't look me up don't <laughs> anyway <laughs> no, I won't 
<laughs> I'm saying to like our, you know, anybody just don't, you don't know. <laughs> don't anyway. go find her on MySpace. Don't find her live journal either. Live yes, journal. I had that as well. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was mm -hmm. the times where you could like customize it. So I've always been interested in that stuff. Um, yeah. And I think I'm able to offer therapists a really decent rate that if you're just starting it out in your business, it's still compensating me for my time, but it's, it's really affordable. And, um, because I'm a therapist, I know sort of what you need on your page. So I've built about nine or 10 websites, which I have never thought about before, but that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it adds up. Yeah. So yeah. And every time I, yeah, every time, um, I'm getting more comfortable with it and I'm very collaborative collaborative with that. So if someone's like, you know, this, I like this color scheme, but I would love to see this sort of change in it, or this image is great. So it's very, instead of me just presenting a website, here you go by it's, it's like very, let's look at it together. Let's hop on a video call. So I do it until that therapist feels like this sounds like me. So it's not just churning out generic yeah. websites. It's, super personal to like what their personality approach approach as a human, not just as a therapist is. So that's been yeah. really fun to, yeah. to get into as well. Neat. I like that. Now, how do people contact you for therapy or for the, the consulting work? How do they reach out? So for the therapy, the website has uh, a lot of direction on how to either schedule, self-schedule. So there's a client portal link in the website and that just would take you to every team member's schedule. So I'm all about like, what's efficient? What takes out having mm -hmm. to be the middleman? Yeah, And that email phone or email tag that we all are aware of where I have Monday at two and you know, five emails later, you're still- Yeah, that oh out. yes. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah, so the website sort of directs you to contact in the contact form or self-schedule from the portal. Um, so that's pretty convenient and it allows for a free phone consultation or you can just jump on into your initial session and mm -hmm. schedule the initial evaluation. So Neat. it gives people that choice. Some people love that phone call and others are like, eh, it's kind of useless to me. I need to be able to see you and really have that full hour to get to know you and everything yeah yeah so options branch out, right mm -hmm. and for branch out i'm still figuring that one out for sure i have um i finally got on the calendly train i love calendly yes it's awesome i think mm -hmm. you use it right yeah i use the free version for one and that's this now i have the bookings app for outlook for scheduling other types of things because I refuse to pay for Calendly at this time because I'm already paying for mm -hmm. Outlook. So anyway, continue. Fair, <laughs> fair. I finally was like, I'm only going to pay for it because it is going to make my life easier and I don't pay for Outlook. I feel like right. they're really, you, there's only so many calendars you want to be paying for. That's yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. There will be a Calendly link in my, um, branch out Instagram, just like at the bottom. And then on the mm -hmm. website there, I'm going to add that Calendly link as well. Um, yeah. For branch out, there's just a contact form right now, but that's my goal is to add that link in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've used it so far and they scheduled okay. So I was like, that's a good sign. Yeah. I think it's working. Good. So I try I to think, make it easy. Yeah. yeah. I think that's how we build our businesses. Sometimes we have to figure it out as we go, find what works for us. You know, you're finding that. So that's neat. <laughs> yes. And I'm very transparent. Um, I think in both as a therapist and a mentor con consul consultant um, that, mm -hmm. hey, I, I don't have all the answers, but we're going to figure it out together. And I'll never mm -hmm. sit there and pretend if I don't know something. And I think that that humanity has been what people are needing more than anything right now. They just need someone who can hold space and be genuine um, and authentic in a way that they're not 
being too cold and clinical or too much jargon um, or just having a little too much of a wall up where it feels just not as easy to connect with your therapist. So I feel like that's something I'm finding the balance with is how do I show up for you, be a professional, help you through what you need help with, while also giving you this experience where it really feels like it's a human to human connection and not this power differential. Of, well, I'm the expert and you're the client. So uh, that has uh -huh. been really important work too in both businesses. Yes. Um, and that's kind of, so I have a coach for my coaching business. That's kind of what my coach says, you know, the human piece is so important. We don't need to know everything. We need to be a few steps ahead of the people we're coaching. And, you know, you're doing that and you're, you're being real. You're, you know, sounds like you're, you're doing great and you have clients. So it's growing. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. yeah. And I think. I wanted to talk to you today because you just seemed like a really great person, business owner. And also I think just doing things like podcasts and trainings and any sort of like thing like that, where you're putting yourself out there is just good, good for us to grow and hopefully mm -hmm. helps other people who are on the fence about doing it. Cause I, I think literally anyone can do this if they just have the right supports and help and openness to learning. I think just knowing we don't have to have it all figured. You don't have to be like this, like highly successful business person who is making six figures. Like you can start very simple and just do a couple things to grow yes. and build on that. And that's just as exciting as someone who's got a practice with three locations. I mean, that's all awesome. It's just, it's okay if that's not your journey or if that's not where you go right away. It's okay yeah. to just hire one person, figure that process out, see how that yep. goes. Yep. And yeah, to each their own. And uh, that's so neat though. So two businesses, sounds like you're growing, you're doing well. Very cool. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want to tell us about anything? <laughs> no, I think uh, that covers a lot of what I was hoping to share with you. And yeah, I think that it was just fun to kind of like rip the bandaid of <laughs> trying a podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining me here and thank you business nerds. See you next time.